Talk nice and loud because you're far, it was such a noise. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, well, let me, let me ask you to introduce yourself, if you would. Right. Well, I'm Olivia Robertson from Ireland, and it's exciting coming here, especially your air, air, air flights are very exciting at the moment, very dramatic, and I love being in Chicago. I'm a co-founder of the Fellowship of ISIS. And um, I'm very old, I'm in my 90th year. Congratulations. Well, <laughs> oh, rather fun, yeah. Mm. I'll be 90 next year. Aries, April the 13th, ball on Friday the 13th. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you've come to this event for many years. Mm. Uh, what What is the biggest change that you see in it? There's an enormous change. When I first came, I came representing uh, the Fellowship of Isis and the Goddess at the Centennial Parliament of the World Religions. And since then, because of the internet, we sort of spread. I know you're set up, the Karelian Wicca has done the same thing. But we've got, I mean, now, it, it's incredible. We've got... Um, uh, uh, and there is 16,000 members and 3,010 centres. You know, people are popping up in 98, no, 96 countries. And I don't know them all now. I used to write a personal letter to every new member. You know, sort of glad to have you, light a candle, but I don't know who they are now or what centres they are, but it's great, it's spreading. Yeah. Mm. Uh, could you um, tell people who may not know what the Fellowship of ISIS is about? The Fellowship of ISIS is multicultural, multiracial, and multi-religious. Uh, multi, uh, that is, you could be any religion. People say, what's your dogma? We, ha we ain't got none. People have their dogma in their own pockets, so to speak. Uh, and we don't give them little rules as to how to live sexually or whatever. It's to their own conscience. We treat members like adults. You know, it's, it's in their own conscience what they do. So it's not, not disciplinary and putting it mildly, <laughs> as you gather by now. Oh, yes. Mm. Um, what do you want to see in the future for the fellowship and the, and the world? I'd like there to be less of this jealousy and competition. Who's to be president? Who's to be top guy? Or most beautiful? I hate all this most beautiful woman in the world. I want us to give up the idea of a ladder that you lick the feet of those above you and kick the nose of those below. I hate that kind of competitive society. I want it to be more like a spiral, like the new universe. Is with equality, I don't mean we've all got to be the same. I think everybody is individual. They've got the God and Goddess within them, and that goes for animals, trees, plants. We're all. The nice thing about the religion of the Goddess is that we're all born of the Mother. You see what I mean? We're not created like a. <clears throat> The patriarchal view is you pick up a lot of dust, spit on it, and then make a little figure. And if you don't like it, you bag it or you burn it, you send it to hell. Or if it's goody-goody and do what you say, you put it on the shelf for a bit. But born of the mother, the mothers love their offspring. Oh, you could have a dad as well, Father God. joining us. It was wonderful spending time. The main thing of matriarchy uh, is this equality. The mother loves all their children, whether ugly or beautiful, clever. And loves animals and we're very keen on environmental uh, thing. I suppose our main thing is women now at the moment protection of children against abuse looking after women and children and their rights because they've been horribly put down and made to feel inferior and then, then we also need our friends the animals to be looked after so I feel very much strongly on that mm. um. If you, um, if you could say one thing to everybody who's watching this, what would it be? Sorry, one thing? If you could say any one thing to the people who see this, what would you say? To achieve this. Uh, one thing, I'd say sharing. We're all I, and you don't want to self-sacrifice, give yourself up. You are individual, you matter, but for goodness sake, look out. You're, all you can see is the tip of your own nose. I, I can't see my back. I can only see my feet, but I can look at you. And that's a secret, really. Look out, and then you see yourself, your real self.
Um, you've had a very amazing life, and it's very hard to believe that you're you're, you're nine now. Yeah, it was wonderful thing I I knew W B H and A E. I seen the beautiful Maud Garn and you know all those celebrities. Lord Rutherford talking about my now and your now. I've heard them all, you know. And yet I'm still alive now. It's wonderful in the year 2000, having known people who were born in about 1850. That, that must be the most amazing thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was a time of horse traffic and, 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 and puffed sleeves, and I don't know what when my mother was alive. You know, there were no. So uh, it's enormous changes, and I think they're good changes. I don't think we'd better blow ourselves up, and we'd better stop using war as a method of, of settling disputes. But when I remember people in utter miserable poverty in Ireland and in England, a frightful poverty among everybody. So now people are beginning, and why is everybody becoming refugees and wanting to live in America or England? Because they like it. They wouldn't come if they didn't. I mean, they think they're going to get a better life. So I'm not a gloomy person. I'm very positive. I believe in the good future. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I love coming here.